All right, I'm going to uh, just take a timeline sheet to start with. This will be the easiest thing to do. Uh, we believe the time of the occurrence of the uh, attempted suicide death investigation we're doing right now was between 9 and 10 p.m. yesterday in the evening. Uh, the location was 17280 South Cicero at the Forest Lumber parking lot. Uh, the victim was transported to Oak Forest Hospital by unknown subjects, but we'll get into more detail on that in a second. Uh, he arrived at the hospital. Uh, we haven't nailed down the time yet because we're trying to work with the hospital personnel. There's a public safety unit there. We have to go into po hospital records. That's going to take us until Monday to get that information. Uh, we were notified at 2.58 a.m. yesterday. We sent an officer to interview uh, Kelly and a female who arrived at the hospital who stated that she drove them there, and I'll give you more details on that in a second. She was a... Uh, identified uh, as Clarissa Flores uh, and told the, our officer at the hospital that she was the girlfriend. Uh, Kelly was transported from Oak Forest Hospital. I was afraid that was against one of you guys. Just hand it off to one of them. It's one of you guys calling me. I'm, I'm, I'm putting money on that one. Um, Kelly was transported from Oak Forest Hospital to Stroger Hospital about 4.15 a.m. Uh, he arrived at Stroger at 5 a.m. and was pronounced dead by Dr. Ruiz at 10.46 a.m. Most of that stuff you already know. Uh, our crime scene, uh, we're treating it as a possible uh, suicide uh, death investigation, but we're also elevating it to the level because of uh, all the issues in here to a homicide investigation. We're working with Area 3 and Area 4 homicide investigators out of Chicago have through the whole night along with our investigators and with the FBI is uh, providing us additional information. Uh, we are the lead in, uh, agency on this and I'm going to give you some details that we weren't allowed to uh, give uh, out last night. Just some more things that we've learned. And as I say, we're piecing this together as we go along because there's, quite frankly, um, we're not being given the whole truth. Um, a lot of, uh, for instance, uh, Flores has uh, lawyered up, as we call it in the trade. She's hired an attorney who's no longer speaking to the, the police. So we have to go through that process, which will be timely and consuming, but we're going to do that. Having said that, we found her wallet in the Escalade that we uh, uh, towed from the Oak Forest Hospital. And I'll allow you folks to go back and film that if you wish. It's in our garage here. You can film it from the outside. But we brought in state ev evidence technicians. Her wallet and her ID was found in that vehicle yesterday, along with some drugs. I won't go into detail what those were because that's part of our evidence chain. Uh, let's see what else we have. She did, uh, we are going to pinpoint the text messages that occurred between her and uh, the victim here, Mr. Kelly and uh, we're working on the triangulation of that uh, through the records and hopefully find out exactly where they were. You know, Escalade has uh, a, a GPS system in it, so we're going to use every technology we can. So I'm giving you a lot of insight to how the law enforcement works, but that's what we're doing. We're going after every detail, just as we're treating it like we would if this was a homicide. It's a high-profile case. We want to do it by the books, by the numbers, and do it right. So I'm willing... I think I've given you all the new information. Oh, um, we had an um, autopsy at 8 o'clock this morning. And as of right now, um, it's done. It's been concluded. We will not know uh, the results of our autopsy until later today. And then we will not know the results of the toxicology, which you also know. That will be some time. Um, I know that the press has released information saying that he died of this, he died of that. I think you're premature. We've got to make sure. Um, the uh, different drugs that were found in the car indicate it wasn't just an, a leaf. So we're going to, from there, I'll take questions. What drugs were they? Well, we won't tell you that. Can you we'll, say, we'll, illegal, can you illegal? say if they were prescription drugs? There were prescription drugs. drugs. The man had gone through some kind of surgery um, to the genitalia area. We're not sure on that yet. We have to get into that information and, and do some investigation on that. But they were pain, pain drugs involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sur surgery when? When did he come to go surgery? We don't know that. And again, we're 24 hours into this. And we're gaining all the information. We're on a weekend. 
which makes it even tougher because this is all medical. It's a doctor, uh, you know, doctor relationship that you have to get into. It's going to require a lot of uh, investigation from us, a lot of subpoenas, and a lot of search warrants. I mean, but we're going to do it all. Can I one at a time, please. I'll take you, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Can either one of you address why uh, Mr. Kelly was at this 17280 South Cicero County arrived at that location? From what we understand, there is a storage facility in the neighborhood there attached to the uh, forest lumber. We believe that maybe he has something stored there, and that's another element we're looking into that we're also going to obtain warrants to start searching that area. The ownership of, the, of that particular place uh, is out of state right now. They'll be in state again tomorrow. Everything's, because it's a weekend, people, it's a holiday, and they're, they're having a good time. It's just going to take us a while to put that together, but we will put that together. And it will, There's basically boats stored there, we've seen, some cars, some landscape uh, contractors. It's directly behind this, this place. Now, it might not be that. It might be one further down. We don't know. We're going to establish that. We're going to be interviewing everyone on Monday morning because we can't talk to them. They're all gone today. So this is an ongoing investigation, you and so uh, you, you said um, that it was, it was unknown who brought Mr. Kelly to the hospital, is that correct, or was it Mrs. We Flores? cannot, vi uh, Mrs. Flores told our officer at the hospital that she drove him there. Okay. But she had to drive to his location to get him. And you don't know where her car is? She drove a car to that location. Oops, I lost channel two. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we don't know. There, there has to be a third party. That's why there, there's information here that is not being provided to us uh, in a, a, a realistic manner, and, and you know we're not buying it. I'll go. Was, was there I'll go. I'll get you next. Was there a man involved who may have taken? I need you to say that again. Or can you talk about that, please? There was a man. Uh, there was another man that showed up at Oak Forest Hospital. Uh, and who attempted to pick up the black es Escalade uh, that was owned by Christopher Kelly. And he did take the key? Pardon? Why was he not able to pick up? Okay, got it. Uh, and he took keys, the car keys, or what? Uh, he took the car. He, he came with keys to take it and wasn't allowed to take it. We do not have the keys to the Escalade we have in the garage right now. So does he have the keys? We don't know. You're not sure. We don't know. We don't know. Yes, we are. Who is it? Who is, what is his relationship with Mr. Uh, he knew him. Is he a friend? Is he a relative? He claimed to be a friend, talked to our officer. This was a junior patrol officer. Didn't get his information because he was working on Mr. Kelly's information. So, And it wouldn't, wouldn't have been something that that officer would have been going after that evening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and get everybody a chance. Go ahead, ma'am. You referred to...